Hello, person. It's Wizard Foo. Remember me? <laughs> Here we go. We're working on multiplayer code today. We are preparing for the July 14th beta where we will have online co op playable. And right now we got two clients we're running and we have them able to pause. There's one issue right now. Let's comment out a little bit of code. It's like pausing and unpausing way too much because I added something I shouldn't have. Let's let's take that away from the code. So we're working on pausing and unpausing at just the right moment. And right now I've got it so it pauses whenever one client has not received input, but it also pauses when they haven't received an ACK, an acknowledgement for their input. And that's where it's just a little bit too much. We shouldn't be pausing that much. The, I, I drew a little diagram and figured out that basically we don't need to pause for acts. We need to only pause when we don't have input. And the real trick is just getting clients to start back up at the right tick once they have paused. Okay, so we're gonna run it again. This time, when the clients automatically pause themselves because they haven't received an input fast enough, they're, they sit there for a second in this unpaused state, and then when they do get the input from the other client, they unpause. And the the trick to all this is going to be getting it so the, the clients can fast forward themselves to the current tick that they should be at, and, and then resume play right at the right tick. So that will cause us to be in lockstep. Right now we're falling out of lockstep a little bit because we are unpausing at the, at the wrong tick. So you notice how already we pause and unpause a little bit and on the left left client here we have we're at the second block over and the on the other client we're like three blocks over. So we have we we've got a little issue where it's unpausing a little bit too early or a little bit too late and so these clients are getting out of sync slightly. And so to solve all that that's kind of the goal for today, but we're not going to be able to do it because there's a lot of system refactoring we're going to have to do. Um, to get it so that we can fast forward game states, but I do have a solution in the meantime So we're gonna turn this off and look at our log files and then we'll get on to this solution. Okay. Wow. 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 Wow Okay, this is great. We have things We now know when we unpause what tick the other client was at so that should help us with resuming on the right tick eventually once I can get this fast forwarding technique to work for now here's our here's our for now solution in world that's a function i'm looking for called set network delay i think nope it's not it's not set network is it set delay yeah it's set delay there it is okay we're gonna set this delay really really high and hopefully that makes us so we have packets that just basically always arrive in time we might need to set it even higher just to kind of guarantee but this should allow me to start testing the game for desyncs. Besides the fact that they're not quite executing their input correctly. Look at this. Yes. I'm liking this. All right. We haven't paused once. It looks like our clients are still in sync for the most part. We've got a state mismatch. It looks like on one of these clients because there's a red ping time. But we're still... Oh, we're still... We're kind of slightly out of sync. Okay, so this is great. We have a lot of good code already written. We got some pausing that can work, but we need to work on unpausing. But in the meantime, we're ready to try some desyncs. So let's go ahead and record the state. What we're gonna do is stop both clients, and then we're going to enable state recording. So we're gonna set playback to two for both clients. So we're gonna record these two clients, and we're gonna figure out if we have any obvious low-hanging fruit type of desyncs we can solve right now all right let's get going play a little bit it does appear to me that that coin that piece of gold is slightly at the wrong place yeah and he got picked up. okay so we've had a desync already let's close these clients and see what we can see with the desyncs i feel like this should be pretty obvious what's going on here matter points is pretty fundamentally and simple thing right this guy's got so much mana, that guy's got so much mana. If we're having a value mismatch on mana, something is should be obvious what's going on that's wrong there. And once again, this happened, it looks like right, we're comparing tick 180. Oh, that's interesting. We didn't start even moving until tick 400 that time. 
but this is saying that we are already off. We're already desynchronized at tick 180. But I did see them pause and unpause. That's something to... Okay, what are we doing? how are we doing on time here? Whoa, dang, it's already six o'clock. Wow, okay. What can I, can I solve this at, is there any way I could solve maybe even this health.mp thing in like the next five minutes? What would be the next step here? This guy thinks he's at health, health of 15. It should be times 10 anyways. Health.mp should be 150 or 310, not 1531. Hmm. I guess the first step would be just logging out how much mana the player is starting with. Let's set these back to playback zero. Back in world, where we're creating the player. Where does it actually set MP? Where does it actually set matter points? Oh, it's, it's, it's in int load. Int load. Anyways, it's, yeah, that's where it will do it, in int load. So after the entity has been loaded is when we can say how much mana. Okay, so we're gonna say percent %s for the player's name has percent %d mana. E.health.mp. Let's even set the mana max too. So percent %d of a percent %d. E.health.mp max. Okay, so now we've got a log statement. Run it and we can we can now see who has how much mana. All right, so Vim has 10 mana. Cam has 554 mana. All right, we're gonna set up playback mode two again. Run it again. I paused that time. Okay, I'm gonna make a copy of log mac. So I still have this L0 log file. Okay, so Vim has 10 mana. Cam has 554 mana. Same thing on the other client, that's good. Okay, let's play back. Coming down here, well, same thing. We got this entity one. Let's see, that, let's open up l0.txt again. Entity one is Vim. He should have 10 mana total at the very beginning. But we're getting a value mismatch. Oh, he could. Oh, oh, I think I understand what might be happening here. At the at the very beginning, there's a there's a slight. There might be a slight amount of time elapsing where one of the players had, has been created, but he's regenerated a certain amount of mana. So like he started uh, he started maybe at 15 mana, but he regenerated to 32 on a different client. Oh, that would make sense. So if the other client the other client's been around longer, even if it's a, even if it's just like a less than a second, he can regenerate a little bit of mana up to 32. And then this other client starts off a little later and he he's only at 15 mana. So let's see if we can disable mana regen regeneration completely and see if this desync goes away. And that should tell us whether that's it or not. And then we'll deal with the consequences later. Even despite our, our clients starting at exactly the same tick, they this would probably indicate that one client has slightly been running a little bit long a little bit longer than the other before they even started at the same tick. Yeah, this guy, yeah, look at that. That guy's only got one mana over there. That means he hasn't regenerated up to 11 or whatever. Okay, let's stop it. Play it back with mode three. If you're watching this stream, you're probably realizing how tedious it is to get multiplayer working correctly. It's a very, it's a very big job. It's not the kind of thing you could just add to your video game very easily. Multiplayer is something you need to plan your entire video game ahead of time for. Down to how every system works in your entire video game. Yes, look at this. That did solve it. We've got it. We still got the move lock timer, action lock timer, but this totally exposes what the real issue is. Because if the move lock timer is different, that's also an indication that one client has been running slightly longer. Even though we got them to start at the same tick, one client is that one client had a slight moment in time before the other client joined and that allowed them to regenerate a little bit more mana or their move lock timer changed a little bit. So here is our, this is actually, so by, by narrowing that down, I now know what to do to probably solve most of all of these desyncs right here. Almost every single one of these things here, except for this player items order, that's a separate thing. But everything else, like the terrain timer, the Z Excel, the Z velocity, the action lock timer, and the move lock timer, and the matter points, or the mana, all of that 
would be affected by one client running even one tick too many before the other client joined and they reset their ticks and got started on the same foot. So heck yeah, you pretty much just found a big set of desyncs right there. Ah, this is great. Okay, well, hey, it's past my time to stop streaming, so it's, we're gonna wrap things up here. So let's get let's get this to playback zero. This guy to playback zero. Run these clients. All right, so on today's stream, here's what we accomplished. This is pretty cool. We have we have two clients able to run. They start off on the same tick. They are able to pause if one client recognizes that it hasn't received input for a certain tick from the other client, it can pause and wait for that input to come in. Silly Billy Bear, hey! How you doing? And the trick now is gonna be getting them to resume on exactly the right tick. That's gonna be a whole nother thing because we kinda have to restructure a few things like systems to enable a thing called fast forwarding. So if one client pauses at tick 102, but they know that the other clients at tick 104 paused, and they, so they both need to restart at essentially tick 104. So tick, the other client needs to fast forward their game state from tick 102 to 104 to catch up to the other client, and then they can start again on the same step. So that's kind of a whole nother thing. The whole unpausing it thing is a whole nother thing. But for now, what I've done is I've got it so there's enough of an input delay. We got our input delay up to 132 milliseconds instead of 64 milliseconds, or 66 milliseconds, whatever. And that is enabling us to pretty much proceed without any pause. Look at this, I'm, I'm running around, I'm pretty much doing the same thing on each client. But we, so, so this is really good. We have, we can, we have the technology in place to pause we know that we need to do some work to be able to unpause correctly. We have a working solution for now. We can just set our input delay really high. And then the last thing is we actually have the ability to detect desyncs now. So this is really good. We found a pretty critical desync. What's happening here is that this client on the right side, this, this right client over here, this player, start slightly before this client does. And what that allows them to do is run a few ticks of their game before they realize that they need to pause and wait for the other client. So that's our desync. What's happening is a little bit of game has state has evolved on this client before that client joins. And what that does is it affects ev almost every single system is affected by that movement. But it's, it's very apparent to mana. Right now we've disabled mana regeneration. So this client only has one mana, that's the blue well, it would be the blue orb in the bottom right. On this client, you can see that there, this client has 56 mana, uh, but this client has only one mana because we've disabled mana regeneration completely. And that caused that desync to go away, which indicates that we have this slight amount of time that's elapsed on this other client. So that's a pretty huge desync. It's a very low hanging thing, very easy to fix, and it will solve a whole bunch of desyncs. So that's really great. We found one of those, and that's all. That's all for today's stream. We got a we got a really good thing going here. Progress is being made towards the July 14th beta, where we'll have multiplayer online co-op available in Wraithbinder. So, man, I'm looking forward to this this next beta. It's gonna be great being able to play this game online with y'all. So, thanks for watching this stream. I'm Wizard Foo. I make games like Wraithbinder here and uh, another one called Songbringer. So you should check out my games and you should wishlist Wraithbinder because if you're into roguelite games or Metroidvanias, you're gonna like this. It's got both of those mixed together. It's like if you took Hades and you mixed in some Super Metroid. All right, everybody, thanks for watching the stream. We'll be back next Wednesday. Wizard Foo signing out.